Welcome to Science Excel, where our motto is to enhance the learning curve. In today's video, let's start with pollination. In our previous video, we had examined the structure of a flower in detail. So, where are the male gametes present in a flower? The male gametes are present inside the pollen grains which are made in the anthers. Now let's learn more about pollen grains. Did you know that the anther has four pollen sacs inside it? Some of the cells around the edge of the pollen sacs divide by meiosis to make pollen grains. When the flower bud opens, the anthers split open and the pollen grains are then revealed. The pollen looks like a fine powder. Pollen grains from different types of flowers have different shapes like round or oblong. Each grain is surrounded by a hard coat so that it can survive in difficult conditions. This coat protects the male gametes that are inside the grains as the pollen is carried from one flower to another. You must be thinking, how are these pollens carried from one flower to another? This lands us on the term pollination. Pollination is the process of transfer of pollen grains from the male part of the plant, the anther, to the female part of the plant, that is the stigma. Now, do you know what are the different types of pollination? Well, let me explain. Self-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower on the same plant. Cross-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower on a different plant of the same species. You would be amazed to know pollination by bees makes two-third of our world crops and 85% of flowering plants possible. We all know that bees help us in pollination and without them we wouldn't exist. But are bees the only ones helping us in pollination? The answer is no. The process of pollination also takes place with the help of agents like wind, water, butterflies, bats, birds and other animals. Now let's understand the characteristics of insect pollinated and wind pollinated flowers. Insect pollinated flowers have large brightly colored petals often with guidelines to help attract insects. Whereas in a wind pollinated flower, the petals are small, dull colored and some species have no petals present as there is no dependence on insects or any other agent except the wind to help in pollination. Insect pollinated flowers have nectaries present at the base of the petals which contain a sweet fluid called nectar which help attract insects and in wind pollinated flowers nectaries are absent. Insect pollinated flowers have anthers and stigma inside the flower. The insect has to brush past them to reach the nectar whereas in a wind pollinated flower anthers and stigma dangle outside the flower where they catch the wind to propagate. Insect pollinated flowers have sticky or spiky pollen grains which sticks to the body of insects. Whereas the pollen grains in wind pollinated flowers are smooth and light which can be blown in the wind. Insect pollinated flowers have large quantities of pollen grains to overcome losses since some will be eaten or will be delivered to the wrong kind of flower. And in wind pollinated flowers, very large quantities of pollen grains are made because most will be blown away and lost. So what do you think is the next process after pollination? The next process is fertilization which will be dealt in detail in our upcoming video. Please go through the summary and assessment that follow. Thanks for watching. If you find the content of the video useful, 
please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to receive updates on new videos.